Welcome back to the 628 Dirt Rooster channel where hobby beekeeping is a way of life. I got a honey frame here that we extracted last night. It's been sitting in the back of my truck all day with the bees working on it and it's pretty, it's hot. It's really, really hot and soft wax. So last night our beekeeping club had a fish fry and we did a extractor demonstration for some of the new folks and what I used for uncapping last night was this roller that I bought from one of the big suppliers <laughs> <Fell apart. laughs> it's got a nut on the end of it where you can take the roller off of it for cleaning purposes but anyhow I, we used this for uncapping a full box of frames last night and it did a a fine job. It's got wax all stuck in it right now from me playing with it on this hot frame. You know, we didn't have a problem last night. The frames were all 70, 75 degrees and and uh, it doesn't cap them real well. Look at there, I'm getting stung just for trying to be nice and feed them some honey. So, um, Anyhow, this, this tool works really well. I'm, I prefer a cap and scratcher. I can make short work of some frames with a cap and scratcher. Um, you know, like I said, this thing, as long as the frames are cool, you don't have any problems, but right now with them being hot, it's just pulling wax off. But the problem with that roller there and is that on this frame, as you can see, it's drawn out a good half inch past the frame in spots. And that doesn't really dress the comb back up, so you um, when I stick this back in a hive, they'll probably draw it out just as far, maybe even further next time. I don't know, it's just first time I'd use one of those. Thought you might like to see the end result. It did a fine job of puncturing the caps, and you can see it did uh, it did allow us to extract uh, 85, 90 percent of the honey. But this is just another nice tool to have in your arsenal and they're, they're fairly cheap, they're 15 bucks or so. What's today, the 20th? 20th, uh -huh. May 20th, we're fishing a dig into a hive removal on an elevated home. Right next to a wetland area which is real common. Bees love to settle in next to wetland. There's a little psh, kind of a pond over there next to the goats and pigs and chickens. This belly cloth under this house is pieced and patched together in a hundred different places so there was plenty of opportunity for them. I smoked them back a little bit so you can see the comb there. Well, this one's gonna be fairly easy. They hadn't been in there long. And the easy part for me is I can't usually sit up under these houses like this, but I can sit straight up under this one. This is nice. It's all roomy and stuff.
strap that some up. Some high grade, <laughs> some high grade, high octane honey. Eh? <laughs> I get, I get dibs on this one. <laughs> This one's a combination piece. I think it's got eggs in it. Hmm. Yep. Shine through the back. You can see the larvae. The larvae. Larva. <laughs> Some serious brood here. Some eggs here. What are you doing? Did you get stung? Yeah, he's one up in the bridge's leg. Ooh, that's fun. Yep. <laughs> Always. Oh, and that's the brood there if it'll stay there. Get some more in it. Hold Stack it. Stack another piece under it. Mm -hmm. Too much there to throw away. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Say, Warren. Even though I got a little bit of room to work on this one, I'm having to lean over and look under that uh, belly cloth. I don't want to tear it out anymore. It's already ragged enough under here. But I got a piece of corplash laid in my lap to keep honey from dripping all on my pants. And uh, my feet are going to sleep. <laughs> so I'm facing out to take a leg break, stretch my legs in a minute. So what I'm doing is reaching up in there and grabbing the cones and wiggling them back and forth until they break off at the, they basically break off at the line where the honey stops and the brood starts. And then I take the uh, hive tool and wiggle it back and forth and cut out the rest of that honey, the uh, honeycomb that's in there. That's how I'm taking that out. And then we frame the brood up and throw the honey in the honey bucket. I spotted the queen and I had my hands full and went to catch her and she disappeared back into the crowd. But she's still in the floor so we gotta keep on a rocking.
good to take off the nose with this thing with the night. <laughs> it's swollen up too bad. I got a new name for stings in the chin. Uh, Getting the Kurt Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> Try to give me a Kurt Douglas. The deed's done. We're about five, ten minutes, fifteen minutes from sunset. The hive's in the box. There was about uh, a thousand or so bees still clinging to floor joists and stuff where it was just kind of difficult to get to. So I set the box against, it, against that pile and, and we're going to see where they go here in just a little bit. Everybody on the box is fanning pretty good, so they ought to be able to find it. If they can't, I'll get back under there and brush it some more. <laughs> <laughs> 